Hello, everyone. My name is Angela Gulick, and I work for the Writing Lab here at Parkland College. This workshop is titled Sentence Structure Review, and in it, we're going to go over run-on sentences, comma splices, and fused sentences. This workshop is designed to give you a general overview of these issues. It is a little bit longer than some of our others, but there's just a lot to go over. If you have questions after this workshop about this topic or others, please feel free to consult the Center for Academic Success Resources page. You'll find handouts, more workshops, and more videos there. Finally, at the end of this presentation will be some additional online resources, including some that have online exercises, little quizzes you can take. In order to avoid run-ons, comma splices, and fused sentences, we need to understand what a sentence is and be able to identify when something's a complete sentence or not. I find it useful to think of a sentence like a little movie, that it has an actor and there's some sort of action taking place. The subject of the sentence is that actor. It's the who or what the sentence is, is about, the sentence, excuse me, is about who or what is doing the action. The action would be our verb, and then in some cases, we need some additional information to have indeed a complete thought. And I just call that a completer. Sometimes it's a single word, sometimes it's a collection of words. But basically, you just need something so that the thought sounds complete. It's only after being able to identify the beginning and ending of a sentence that you can punctuate that sentence carefully and accurately. Let's look, look at some examples. Okay, again, if you think of a sentence like a little movie, we have to figure out who's our star. In this sentence, not all people are the stars of our sentence. They're the ones who are going to be doing some sort of action. What about these people? Not all people what? Not all people are. That's our verb. And then not all people are what? We need something to finish out this thought. Not all people are fans of going out on New Year's Eve. And that purple part is just what I call the completer. It just finishes out our thought. When we have those three parts, we know we have a complete sentence that needs a capital letter on one side and some sort of punctuation on the other. Here's another example. Angela dropped. Again, who's the star of the movie? In this case, it's me, Angela. And what action did Angela perform? What is she doing? Angela dropped. But in this case, we don't yet have a complete thought. We need to know what Angela dropped. A vase, a picture frame, a puppy, or as one of my students in class said one time, Angela dropped dead, which made me very nervous to hear. But whatever the answer, we need something at the end of that verb. Angela dropped an expensive music box. Angela dropped a frozen turkey on her foot. Angela dropped $75 on a new purse. Angela dropped by the library to pick up the latest David Sedaris book. We need something to fill out that thought. The sentences we've looked at so far have had the three parts, but sometimes a sentence only needs two. It needs an actor and it needs action. So here's an example. The Wallard High School performed. In this case, again, in our little movie, who's the actor, who's the star? It's the Wallard High School choir. And what about that choir? What did that choir do? The choir performed. We don't need anything else to have a complete grammatical thought. You might see that sentence, for example, in a newspaper review. Last Friday night, audience members were in for a real treat. Soprano Amy Dolan sang a medley of swing band numbers backed by the Wallard High School band. The Wallard High School choir performed. Now certainly, we could get additional information, give us some more detail. For example, the Wallard High School performed a tribute to Broadway musicals. But those purple details are not necessary to have a complete grammatical sentence. Some sentences literally are two words long. Angela sat. A piece of trivia here, the shortest sentence in the Bible is Jesus wept. It's a complete thought, even though it's only two words long. So really, if you can just look at a sentence, as I said, like a movie, identify who the star is, identify what that star is doing, and then ask yourself, is the thought complete or do I need something else? So in this example, for Christmas this year, my brother Steve wrapped up a 50-pound bag of birdseed. I laughed. Who's the star of the sentence? My brother Steve. What did Steve do? He wrapped up something. And what is it that he wrapped up? A 50-pound bag of birdseed. Complete sentence. Ended with a period. The next sentence, I laughed, 
is, sort of like Jesus wept, a complete thought. The star is I, and what the star did was laughed, and that's all we need. Again, we could add some more purple detail. I laughed at what a terrible job my brother did wrapping, but I'm very grateful my birds will eat this winter, but I don't have to add those details. In terms of sentence errors, there are three types that we're going to be focusing on, and they all deal with the same issue, and that is, what do you do when you have two sentences right next to each other? How do you separate them appropriately? And those errors are run-on sentences, comma splices, and fused sentences. Let's start out with run-on sentences. What is it? A run-on sentence occurs when two complete sentences sit right next to each other with no words or punctuation to separate them. Nothing at all. They're just sitting right next to each other. Here are some examples. I forgot to turn the timer on for my oven. My brownies were burned. My mom lives in Iowa. She will be so happy when the Iowa caucuses are over. And this winter has been really cold. I've spent a lot of time outside walking my dog anyway. So that little exercise we did in the previous slides, which is to find out what's my a what's my actor, or who is my actor, what is the action being done, and is there something else I need to add to my sentence, we need to do that in order to determine where one sentence ends and the next begins. Let's take another look at our sentences. This time, they've been color-coded. I forgot to turn the timer on for my oven is a complete sentence. My brownies were burned is a complete sentence. My mom lives in Iowa is a complete sentence. She will be so happy when the Iowa caucuses are over. This winter has been really cold. I've, been, I've spent a lot more time outside walking my dog anyway. So step one of a run-on sentence is simply to identify where the colors change, where the red turns into the green. There are four main ways to fix run-on sentences and comma splices for that matter, and here's what they are. Some of them you'll be very familiar with. Method number one is to physically pull those two sentences apart, to put a period at the end of the first sentence and capitalize the letter at the beginning of the second. And we see that, oops, sorry, try that again. We see that in all three of these examples. There's no reason that these sentences need to be connected or joined in our readers' minds. They're completely separate with this method. Method two is to use a comma and something called a coordinating conjunction. There are only seven coordinating conjunctions in all of the world, for and nor, but or yet so. And if you take the first letter of each of those words, it spells out the word fanboys. I like to tell my students that uh, there are only seven of these words, and if a student can memorize a telephone number, a student can memorize this list. So notice, I forgot to turn the timer on for my oven, comma, so my brownies were burned. So I've included one of our fanboys' words. My mom lives in Iowa, and she will be so happy when the Iowa caucuses are over. The winter has been really cold, comma, but... I've spent a lot of time outside walking my dog anyway. Please notice this. If you are going to have a comma and one of those seven magic words, you have to have a complete sentence on each side. For example, with my mom lives in Iowa, if I would have omitted the she, if I would have said my mom lives in Iowa and will be so happy when the Iowa caucuses are over, I do not need the comma. I only need the comma if I have a complete grammatical sentence that follows and, or so, or but. The third method is to use a semicolon. A semicolon simply functions like a period in a capital letter. It separates two complete sentences from each other. But the reason we use semicolons is because we see those sentences as being especially related to each other. In other words, we want our readers to read those sentences as a pair as opposed to separate thoughts. And it's really a judgment call. If you think those sentences should be linked together, by all means, link them together. But notice if you have a semicolon, you don't also need a coordinating conjunction. I forgot to turn the timer on for my oven. Semicolon, my brownies were burned. 
I just have the semicolon alone. I don't have one of these words. Further, the word immediately following the semicolon is not capitalized. The only exception to that would be if the word was capitalized anyway, such as the contraction I've or I have. The fourth method is the fanciest. It is to use a semicolon, just like we did here, but also to use something called a conjunctive adverb. Another sort of special list of words. Let's take a look at some examples. First of all, please don't feel like you have to memorize this whole list, but I'd like you to have a general idea of what it is we're going for. A conjunctive adverb is what I call a fancy word because it's a little bit longer than a word like and, or, or but, um, and it's a word that we can put in between two sentences to show how those sentences are related to each other. Are they opposites of each other, in which case we would use a word like however, or are they examples of each other, in which case we might say furthermore, or moreover, or similarly. So let's look at some of our sentences, this time using conjunctive adverbs. I forgot to turn the timer on for my oven, semicolon, therefore my brownies were burned. Therefore is just showing the relationship between the first and the second sentence. Notice our pattern of punctuation. We have a semicolon, then our conjunctive adverb, then a comma, and now we're ready for our second sentence. My mom lives in Iowa, semicolon, certainly, comma, she will be so happy when the Iowa caucuses are over. This winter has been really cold, semicolon, however, comma, I've spent a lot more time walking my dog anyway. Conjunctive adverbs are a little bit more sophisticated, but basically, conjunctive adverbs do the same thing as a coordinating conjunction would. Remember, I forgot to turn my timer on for my oven, so my brownies were burned. Or my mom lives in Iowa, and she will be so happy when the Iowa caucuses are over. Or this winter has been really cold, but I've spent a lot of time outside walking my dog anyway. So you have a choice. Indeed, you have four choices on how to separate two sentences from each other. But the bottom line is there needs to be some kind of separation. You can't just have a space. Comma splices operate in much the same way, so you're going to see a lot of repetition of, of concept here. A comma splice occurs when you have two complete sentences sitting right next to each other, and instead of there just being a space or a gap, you have just a comma. So let's look at some examples. I really enjoy the television show, show Supernatural. Those stories get pretty outlandish. Hot chocolate is great. Hot chocolate with marshmallows is heavenly. And last weekend I had the stomach flu. I hope it wasn't because I drank so much hot chocolate with marshmallows. So the commas in each case are showing us where the first sentence ends and the second sentence begins. And we can see that a little more clearly in our color-coded examples. I really enjoy the television show, Supernatural. Hot chocolate alone is great. Last weekend I had the stomach flu. All complete sentences. And then what's in green? also complete sentences. But we only have commas in between and we need something a little bit more powerful than that. Guess what folks? Our choices are the exact same ones we had for run-ons, run-on sentences. A period and a capital letter. I really enjoy the television show Supernatural. End of sentence. Period. Full stop. Those stories get pretty outlandish. Hot chocolate alone is great. Period. Hot chocolate with marshmallows is heavenly. Last weekend I had the stomach flu, period. I hope it wasn't because I drank so much hot chocolate with marshmallows. Again, a period in a capital letter creates the strongest boundary between two sentences. If you don't think the sentences are particularly related to each other, that's the route to go. We can also use a comma in a coordinating conjunction. I really enjoy the television show Supernatural, comma, yet those stories get pretty outlandish. My first sentence, comma, but hot chocolate with marshmallows is heavenly. Last weekend I had the stomach flu, comma, and I hope it wasn't because I drank so much hot chocolate with marshmallows. Remember when we use a comma 
and a coordinating conjunction, you need a sentence on each side. In this example, I could have said, last weekend I had the stomach flu and hope it wasn't because I drank so much hot chocolate with marshmallows. If I would have chosen to remove that second subject, the second I, I would not have needed the comma. Semicolons or semicolons with conjunctive adverbs, just like what we saw. I really enjoy the television show Supernatural, semicolon, nonetheless, comma, those stories get pretty outlandish. Again, just remember our pattern, semicolon, fancy word, comma. Hot chocolate alone is great, semicolon, however, comma, hot chocolate with marshmallows is heavenly. And finally, last weekend I had the stomach flu, semicolon, indeed, comma, I hope it wasn't because I drank so much hot chocolate with marshmallows. So the good news is you solve comma splices and you solve run-on sentences the exact same way. The trick is recognizing when you have them so that you can fix them. And a quick comment about a fused sentence. Fused sentences simply mean that you remembered to put a coordinating conjunction in between your two sentences, but you forgot to put the comma. It's a less serious error, but one that you'd want to know about. My house is so messy, yet I don't have the energy to get up and clean. We have two complete sentences. My house is my star of my story. What about it? My house is something. My house is what? My house is so messy. I am the star of my second sentence. I what? I don't have. I don't have something. What is it I don't have? The energy to get up and clean. So I know I have two sentences, and I remembered to put a coordinating conjunction in between them, and that's great. But if I forget to put that comma in right there, I have a fused sentence. Another quick example, Susan really wants to learn how to knit, so she is taking a knitting class. Susan is our star. Susan really wants something. What is it she really wants? She wants to learn how to knit. She is our second star. She is taking something. What is she taking? A knitting class. So we know we have our two sentences. We remembered to put the coordinating conjunction so in the middle of them, but we just have to remember to put the comma in as well or we have a fused sentence. So, just a quick reminder, you have four choices when it comes to separating out your sentences. Probably the most basic is a period and a capital letter. This is best used when you have sentences that you do not see as being particularly joined in some way. A sentence with a comma and a coordinating conjunction. Remember, if you leave the comma out, you have a fused sentence. A semicolon or probably our most fancy, a semicolon, a conjunctive adverb, a comma. And that's a basic overview of run-ons, comma splices, and fused sentences. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to come by the Writing Lab in room D120, or check out the list of workshops we have available on our CAS resources page. I also provided you some additional online sources that are helpful in terms of grammar, lots of general topics being covered. One source I really recommend, though, especially for this particular topic, is a source called Grammar Bytes. Grammar Bytes is a website that's made up of interactive, free exercises, little quizzes. So, for example, comma splices and fused sentences. There are a bunch of exercises here that you can take to see how well you understand the concepts. There are some additional handouts that will build upon what I did in this workshop. And this is a really fun site. It uses lots of graphics and sound effects. Um, it's really super creative. I spent a lot of time playing around with it. Please, though, be aware that with this particular site, just the Grammar Bytes, the first time you use it, you might be asked to download a small program onto your computer. That's just so that the sound effects and the graphics will work for you. Again, thank you for your time. Please remember, we're happy to expand on any of these topics in the Writing Lab. Good luck this semester. Thanks, and goodbye.